Breach of trust is a, tries to focus more narrowly and specifically than this book does on the whole question of civil military relations. Now, there's two ways to think about civil military relations. And the one, and the one, the one sort of a way is to think about the interaction between the civilian leadership, President Obama, uh, Secretary Hagel, and the three and four star generals who are the leaders of our, of our military. Certainly, that's, that, that is one view of the civil military relationship. But the other civil military relationship, which I think I've come to believe is far more important, is the relationship between us, the American people, and our soldiers. And I think that relationship is broken and fraudulent. Uh, fraudulent in the sense that with something close to unanimity, uh, we recognize the need to support the troops. And I dare say most of us would, would testify to our commitment to that notion. But it is a testimonial that is sadly lacking in substance. Because in fact, what we, what we have come to accept is a military system in which roughly 1%, less than 1% of us bear the burden of service and sacrifice. And the other 99% of us are disengaged from what our soldiers are sent to do. We don't serve, we don't sacrifice, we don't pay for the wars. And I think that this division of labor, where some fight, and to put it bluntly, the rest consume, has led to an absence of attention about what our soldiers are actually called upon to do and the fate that they suffer as a consequence of that. Um, this is something that I find deeply distressing uh, and I think has to be addressed if we are ever going to come to a, once again, return to a realistic understanding of what military power can do and of where armed force should fit in the panoply of instruments uh, that provide the basis for uh, advancing our interests in the world.